Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Keeping Up with Papa Life After Work, where we explore how one man manages to keep himself busy after retirement with projects. Today's project, repairing paint issues, and that's a few nicks and scratches, some peeling paint, and a few small dents on our 1973 Volkswagen Westphalia camper bus. Hey, check it out. When the heat from the sun's feeling out of control You gotta head to a place where the water's cold It's just what I need And I can't wait I worked all week long and I need a break It's a short little trip that you gotta make When life gets dry When life gets too dry, baby When life gets dry You gotta take it to the lake You gotta take it to the lake. Oh, yeah. Welcome back, everyone. As I mentioned earlier, we are the proud owners of a 1973 Volkswagen Westphalia camper bus, often referred to as a Type 2 or a Combi. We refer to it as the Bampa bus. Why? Well, we inherited the bus from my wife's father, and he was sometimes called Bampa by his grandkids when they were little. Now, we've had the bus since around 2010. Um, it spent its early life in California, then we brought it to Florida, where I stripped it down, painted it, and reassembled it. Now, honestly, it was a lot more complicated than that, but we'll save that for a later episode. So, this bus is not what, in the car show world, they call a trailer queen. No, no, we use the bus quite often. It makes a fantastic utility vehicle. But over the past decade or so since I painted it, a few issues have popped up. Mostly it's chip paint and there was one spot up front where there was an unknown impact of some sort and the paint was peeling away. Then, finally not so long ago, a deer hit the bus. No, no. I didn't hit the deer. The deer hit me. Low and midway on the driver's side. Now that left about a, about a four inch oval dent. It really wasn't all that noticeable because it was down low, but I knew about it and I wanted it gone. Finally, all these little imperfections, well, they built up to the point where they were bothering me. Well, imperfections or not, I definitely did not want to repaint the entire bus or pay someone else to do it for me. You know, I thought, if necessary, maybe I could just get away with a little bit of touch-up here and there. But even then, I, I didn't really want to make the effort. Hey, cue a local photographer. Now, people love the bus, and I mentioned to a photographer that, you know, it might make a good backdrop for some photo shoots. Well, she jumped on it, and when the word spread throughout the local photography community, those photographers jumped on the bus as well. For me, these would be paying gigs. That was the boost I needed to get the Bampa bus back into pristine condition, or at least somewhat pristine. So, the first shoot was booked, so now I was on a schedule. I gave it some thought, put together a plan. First item to tackle, the rims. Hey, it seems that for me, this is a regular once a year project. Now, I just use rattle cam paint from my local flaps. That's your friendly local auto parts store. And it only seems to last about a year before it starts to bleed back through. That native nasty crud under there just starts to show up again. Now I've sandblasted them before paint, one time before. It didn't really help a whole lot. I also prime pretty effectively, but what I really need to do is to have them powder coated. Now that's a lot of work. I mean, you gotta take off all four wheels and the spare, take them to the tire shop, have the tires removed, take the rims to get them powder coated, get them back to the tire shop, have them remounted and brought back, and that's a lot of work. You know, I think I'll just wait until I get new tires and do it then. In the meantime, what I'm currently doing is really pretty simple. The wheel comes off, gets cleaned up, set it on two saw horses, use masking tape on the tire at the margin between the rim and the tire, 
thin tape paper over the rest of the tire to protect it from overspray, paint, let it dry, repeat, remount. One tire at a time. It's an off and on process that takes a full day. But they look great when done, don't they? For a while anyway. Back to the bus and a word about paint. Now, modern paint is what you call two-stage. You paint with your color and then you repaint with a clear coat. Our bus has something called single stage and that simplifies things quite a bit. There's no clear coat involved. The bus is also a very neutral off-white which hopefully makes it a bit more forgiving for blending old paint and new paint compared to darker colors. Now, I was gambling a bit that the new paint would be pretty true to the old and that I would be able to paint and blend pretty easily. Well, that was a hunch. Trust me, you will learn my hunches do not always pay off. Hmm. Now, to be clear, this project was not about showroom perfection. I really just wanted to get rid of what I considered to be a few glaring imperfections. I mean, the bus is white, and chip paint showing surface rust well, that really stands out. Now, I'll admit that these are things that mostly only I would notice, but they were obvious enough that they might show up in photos, and, well, if people were paying to use the bus as a backdrop, it needed to be somewhat showroom clean, you know, at least from a distance. So I felt that most of the little chips could be handled by a light feathering with sandpaper and a little bit of gentle touch-up, but there were three spots that needed special attention. Time to talk to the pros. Now, this is really interesting. When I first painted the bus, I discovered that you can go to an automotive paint shop and they will put your paint into a spray can for you. Wow, this was a major advantage. It meant that I didn't have to break out that formal painting equipment, something I do have, but it's put away somewhere in the garage. I haven't touched it in years. I need to relearn how to use it. Now, I had kept all the leftover paint from the first go-around, knowing I'd need it again at some point. So I dug out those cans and headed to the same paint store I had used years earlier. I ordered two cans of Cloud White for the bumper and two cans of the Pastel White for the body. And I picked up a huge can of Bondo because that's all they had in size. Most of it I will never use. Now the deer dent, which was right here, was going to be my biggest problem. As I said before, it was about four inches oval and pretty deep. Sorry, I didn't take her before picture. I really needed to have it pulled out rather than just bondo it. So I asked the paint guys if they knew of any of those mobile paintless dent repair services for small dents. Well, of course they did. And they gave me the guy's number. So before I left, I called him. And it just so happened that he was right across the street at the car dealership. And I mean right across the street. He told me, come on over. Well, he was intrigued with the dent, mainly because this is a 50-year-old vehicle with 1973 thick German metal, not today's tinfoil. He really wasn't sure he could pull it out, but he tried. And for a very reasonable fee, he pulled the dent in about 15 minutes. Well, it wasn't perfect. The paint cracked in the process, which meant that I would have to repaint, but it turned out far better than it would have had I tried to do it myself. This was a good first move. My next move in this project was to repaint the rear bumper. Okay, so the next step is to get the bumper disassembled and clean it up good. So really just some bolts and everything is now in pieces. I took this all off uh, in part because I do have some pretty good chips on it that I think needed a little tension off the bus. The uh, bumper on the front is just not nearly as bad. A few little spots here and there. This one on the rear took a whole lot of beating because when we when we tailgate, we tend to use it as something that we prop things up on. Um, so it's coming off to get painted. All in all, 
brackets are in pretty good shape. A little bit of speckled rust here and there. Get that all cleaned up. Probably put a little coat of primer on the backside here before I paint that. And the fronts look, uh, they look pretty good. Note that these brackets that hold all of this onto the bumper, when I repainted the whole bus a few years back, I used a product called Pour 15 on it. And that's as a good protector for, um, for metal to keep it from rusting and failing. So um, it's got a little surface rust on it again where the Pour 15 is worn through. And I will order another can of that, I think, and paint that in advance as well before I put it all back together. So, clean it up, let it dry, and then we will paint. All right, all cleaned up, sanded, wiped down really well. I've got it up on blocks so that I can get the edges without any runs. And um, I think we're ready to give her a coat of paint. All right, first coat in place. It is a light coat. We basically put down one, two, three coats total is what I'm planning on doing. You saw some spots there where it didn't get full coverage just because it was bare metal, but it's starting to look really, really good. I'll wait about 20 minutes between coats. Okay, so 48 hours later, uh, allowing sufficient time for the bumper to dry, I reassembled it and put it back onto the bus. Really looked good. However, in the process, I managed to scratch it, as you might expect. So, I took a piece of cardboard and used it as a shield, just held it in place, and then took my spray can and sprayed, touched it up, back to beautiful. Turned out great. Next, I went around the bus with a roll of blue painter's tape and marked every imperfection that I wanted to address. The bus, the bus looked like it had blue needles. Now, the first spot to tackle on the bus body would be a section at the driver's wheel well that is somehow peeled away right along here. Somewhere along the line it had taken a hit and the paint had actually cracked. Well, I chipped away all the loose paint with a, with a pen knife and then I sanded it down and I feathered the edges. So this is one of my bad spots. The paint here had flaked up real bad in about two thirds of this area. I think what had happened was there was an impact that occurred here and it caused that to pop up. No idea what it hit when, but that seems to be what happened. So at that point, I basically just took a pen knife and I cleaned up all the flaking and then dug in a little deeper along those edges. And now I will come in with sandpaper, clean it up good, feather it out, starting off with 150, quite frankly, and then moving all the way up to probably about 1200 and get it nice and clean. And then it'll get a coat of primer be uh, feathered down again, get another coat of primer, probably be lightly sanded, and then it'll get at least two, maybe three coats of spray paint. And I'll probably just mask off this whole area in here and reshoot most of that little panel. This is where the professional paint guys will cringe. They would want me to paint the entire panel. Well, I didn't want to do that. So instead, just gambling that I had a good enough color match, I taped off and shielded the surrounding area to protect from overspray. And then I cleaned, primed, and painted with matching rattle can paint. Like the bumper, three coats. Hmm. The next day it looked really good until I removed the tape. There was a very obvious tape line. However, I expected this, so I went at it with 1500 grit sandpaper, wet sandpaper, and I blended it in to the old paint. Then I used a good polishing compound and a finishing compound, and it looked fantastic. Admittedly, the blending is not 100% perfect, but it is a good 10-footer and more than accomplished what I wanted. I'm quite satisfied with the results. I used the same basic pattern on all the other repairs. So this is the second section that needs special attention. This was hit by a deer uh, a couple of months ago. Um, put a nice little bump in there and you can see from the size of my hand roughly how big that is. I happened to run into a guy that was doing dentless uh, repairs and he pulled it for me. Um, paint was of course damaged in the process. So now what I'll be doing is I don't want to repaint this whole panel. It's huge and it's down in such a low spot that any minor inconsistencies in the paint color I don't think will make any difference to anyone but me. So uh, I'll be sanding down those edges, smoothing them off good. Um, 
I've, he told me that I needed to go ahead and bondo it uh, because it's not quite perfectly smooth and it's really, really close. But he's correct, it's not quite there. So we'll put a skim coat of bondo on, sand it down, skim coat it again, sand it down, and then we'll prime and paint an area about five inches by four inches maybe. And after that, after a week or so, I'll come back and hit it with um, some polishing compound. Okay, so she says a skim coat. And so that's what we're gonna do. Got a little item here to help spread it on with. Premixed just way too much actually. But um, can't do just a little bit. So we're just gonna lightly put a coat on. Take it off. Nice thing about this little tool here is it conforms to the shape. And that's really all we want right there. So this will sit overnight and uh, all these little pieces right here will pop right off. And um, I'll sand it down smooth in the morning. If I like the way it's finished, we're done. If not, I'll do it again. This is actually the opposite of a dent. Somehow the door mechanism had jumped track and it hit the inside of this cover and created a, a bump to the outside. Paint popped off, we had exposed metal, metal rusted, and it was very obvious. So I first tried banging the bump back into place, kind of you know, mimicking what I'd seen the tech do when he fixed the deer divot. Not much luck. After multiple attempts, I, I gave up. I removed the entire piece from the bus and took it to the bench. There's a couple of screws here and a screw down here, then the whole piece lifts up. Then, using a variety of just totally inappropriate tools, I was able to make it look a whole lot better. Um, of the three big repairs, this one was really the least successful. It still looks almost perfect compared to that glaring rusted pimple that was there before. And it's pretty smooth. You know, again, it's a good 10-footer. Up close, you can see it. From here on out, everything else was just touch-up of paint chips and scratches. You know, one that had bothered me for years was a pretty big chip just above the windshield, right in here, where possibly my not-to-be-named grandson Josh and his not-to-be-named friend Zach were throwing a football when we were tailgating and just so happened it perfectly hit the antenna here where the antenna slapped back and hit here and put a dime size hole in the paint. Left a big, big chip missing. Well, to be fair, there were others, many others, and those I earned on my own, no help was needed. Now, these touch-ups were really pretty simple. They aren't perfect, but all I really wanted to do was clean out the surface rust and do my best to blend in a few coats of paint. Now, this was done with sandpaper wrapped around the end of a Again, a totally inappropriate blunt tool. Then I cut a Q-tip in half and sprayed paint on the non-cotton end and then just dabbed that into place. Now each spot required several applications to build the paint up to the level or close to the level of the existing paint and to make sure the margins were all properly done. Then a little bit of polish work and again, not perfect, but when using this process, it could be perfect if I were to have taken more time but it really got me to where I wanted to go. A word on the paint I used. The bumper paint was very simple. Just shake, point, and spray. Now, body paint is quite a bit more sophisticated. This comes with an activator built in. So you had to take this red piece off, put it on the bottom, and then whack it hard on your hand or on the concrete to break the activator container inside the can open, and so it would activate the paint. You then shake it up good, and you had to use it within 48 hours. If you didn't, the tip would gum up and the paint inside would start to solidify. So I had to plan carefully or I'd be spending a lot more money on paint than I really wanted to. The front bumper was last. It really was not in bad shape and the spray can paint was a pretty close match. So I cleaned up the spots that needed addressing then used the Q-tip trip. Well, looking at the bumper while prepping for this video, Apparently I blocked out the fact that it's really not a perfect match and the touch-up is pretty obvious if you look closely. Well, now it's bothering me, so I'll probably pull the bumper at some point and repaint the entire unit. Here's a safety PSA about automotive paint and ventilation. 
Now I did all this work just barely inside the garage, right where I am right now, and with a fan on behind me, and while wearing an N95 mask. I do have a respirator set up for this kind of painting, but being almost outdoors, you know, I was pretty comfortable with just the mask. I had no issues at all, but believe me, you know if you inhale this kind of paint, it is not pleasant. Keep in mind, automotive paint is nasty, nasty stuff and can do serious number on your lungs. Do not spray without taking proper precautions. So now, two final items needed to be addressed. The first, over the years the canvas for the pop-up sleeping area has gotten pretty dirty. Now, this really wasn't likely to be much of an issue for the photographers because most of them don't seem for some reason to like to have the top popped up. However, a good cleaning was still in order, and I'm glad I did it. It was really dirty up in here around these hinges. Now, it looks a whole lot better. Well, the last bit of touch-up was new chrome rings around the headlights. Here are the old ones, and here are the new ones. It's amazing just what you can still get via aftermarket for these older vehicles. Bus parts are really not all that hard to find. It's great. Well, there you have it. Overall, I'm very happy with the results. What's even better, I think I can manage another 10 years at least before full repaint is in order, just by touching up when needed. Well, that is if the deer will stop using the old fella for headbutting practice. And that's it. Well, let's close by referencing that classic tune from Old MacDonald's Farm, E-I-E-I-O. I hope you found this to be educational, interesting, entertaining, informative, and to be an outstanding use of your spare time. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. See you next time on Keeping Up With Papa, Life After Work. Come on, Bampa. Let's go run a few errands. Where we explore one man's mosquito bite. It's the blending is not 100% perfect, but it is a bit. <laughs> I hope you found this educational, entertaining, interesting. Inca, thank you,